What's up, guys? Live show on YouTube Shorts here. I've been having a freaking epic of a time because, as you can see, I had to survive a freaking snowstorm trying to move everything, and my movers ended up not showing up. My internet guy ended up not showing up. I'm left here to... Oh, shit. Oh, God. Jet's been doing that, some sniffing salts. I, I, I don't recommend it. Don't recommend it. But So the live show is going to be a little bit different. As you can see, my laptop with the internet is not working as well. So this is what we're going to do. I want to make sure that I still get content out there. But unfortunately, there's just some things that you have to, to work on. So this is not going to be as drawn on and as production-wise. So I do apologize to everybody that shows up, helps with everything because the quality has been going down. You get kicked out? I was <laughs> no, I, I have not. I have not. So the problem I'm having right now is I just, I have no internet because I've been moving and that's a problem. You know, my phone hasn't been streaming. So this is how I'm going to do the live show. And guys, the quality is going to go up once I'm all settled because like I said, I got everything packed. You know, there's my $14,000 bicycle. Here's, here's my new YouTube studio. There's nothing freaking there, right? Look at this. Look at this. I'll talk about racing, but I just had some sniffing salt. So I'm all hopped up. Look at this Cervelo, man. My coach probably would not want me to be wrapping that bike that way. But uh, anyway, on to what my thumbnail states and everything with, this is actually a broken couch because freaking U-Haul broke shit. So this stuff is in here. Don't really recommend U-Haul. Man, okay, tangent, I digress. It was gonna cost like 10 grand to move. I said, nope, F that, I'm gonna do it in half the price, right? So I get a moving van, get all this stuff. I get overcharged. There's, there's so much different stuff that ended up happening, which was a pain in the ass. We moved in this snowstorm and I'm, WFO in this giant ass moving van. I got my younger brother behind me just hauling effing ass, trying to keep up the snow. It was awful. So yeah, oh, dude, I'm just, I'm happy that it's over with. So anyway, without any more BS going on, cause I'm about to lose it over here. Let's talk about some racing action. And what I really think is going on with Jet is the Triple Crown should have the last moto of the day should be at least double points to win because you know how much more riders would push because at the start of that yes kenny is freaking on fire that dude knows how to ride a motorcycle and he has never been better since his injury i think with all of his epstein bar and everything that has happened, we are not seeing Kenny fade anymore. We are seeing Kenny accelerate. Lack of a better word, we're seeing Kenny use beast mode. And honestly, I almost think people should start protesting to Kenny for having works parts because he's got a Kickstarter. You know, <laughs> maybe he should honestly probably get like a 10 pound weight reduction in the rules because of that sucker. And, and on the topic of works parts, did we see Chase and his bike with the WB forks? and the KYB settings. I personally have read, have ridden Huskies and KTMs that have the spring conversion kits in them and that actually get away from WP and go to KYB and they freaking rock. So this right here, if you guys can see it, to me, everyone in the press has been asking, hey, what are you running? It to me looks exactly like a KYB conversion kit, something in there. And we see Sexton since Daytona doing a lot better on those forks, but back to Jet. Jet is toying with Kenny. He was going to let him win that last race. He was going to let him win that last race. Honestly, this couch is quite a bit more comfortable being broken. You probably can't hear it, but it's it's snapped. Everything is is displaced. It's it's not in its right order. Because Sexton was pressuring Kenny, well, actually, Sexton, wait, dude, it's the sniffing salts. We had Jet being pressured by Sexton, 
Therefore, Sexton ended up having to put the hammer down and get around Kenny because he was going to win no matter what as long as Sexton getting by him. But Sexton was all over his ass, so he had to move forward and get around Kenny, and he made it look really easy. The first two races, Kenny was out front. He was doing well, but you've got Jet getting the best of him. Jet is just on a different level. When we talk about a generational talent, and I get a lot of slack for talking about Deegan for the fact that, yeah, I do think Deegan is going to win championships, but he's not going to break records like Jet's going to. It's that whole opportunity cost, and Deegan has a massive opportunity, and therefore he can't help but be successful. Granted, he has put it in the work. He's put in all the effort, and I did like to see him in the booth you know, on the podium saying, hey, I'm somewhat apologize. I thought that was a great PR stunt for what happened with Seth and everything later on. We're going to see that kid win some championships in some races, but we're not going to see him go on a streak in the 450 class like we're going to see Jet. Jet is now three races in a row. Dude, is he unstoppable? He could damn near be unstoppable what i saw him do on a bike that track was gnarly i was like hey is this another open stadium because that track was getting torn up you saw dirtworks by the way did a great job with making sure that they went out there every moto and redoing a lot of the lips because these riders are arguably racing 50 percent longer than usual and they don't like it because they're not getting paid more. They should at least get double points or something. Going back to that, hey, whole third race deal, make it double points for the winner or something. Make a bonus point for the winner. Make it more entertaining, even though we did see some really, really good racing. And the whole nine whoop thing, I, I might get into that as well. But they had to flatten out a bunch of those ruts every moto because of how bad it was that whoop section i want to say sucked because there's only nine and it was that off camber right there but it actually made for some really good racing tom vial the only reason why he didn't win the overall is because of the whoops ironically because the last two rounds he won because there was really no whoops right dang so cody shock in the 250 class man plating that collarbone i've plated mine multiple times i got 12 screws in it right now and riding is awful and that sucker is not glued in by anything yeah it feels good because you can move but you haven't given your body enough time to heal when it comes to like making the foundation of those screws his orthopedic surgeon's probably like don't fall down and what does cody shock do he falls effing down so the dude is badass but i will say <clears throat> that Cody Shock is forced to ride. I'm not saying by Club MX. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying <clears throat> is the opportunity cost. You have Cody Shock on the best team that he has been a part of with Club MX, and he's never been in a championship battle before. So why wouldn't he try to race? This is his whole, whole career is on the line based on how he performs. So he's got to put it together absolutely got to put it together that's just what this sport does we saw cameron on the podium darn near cry he was very composed and everything because he's been through the ringer i honestly wanted to title the video balls out racing because that's going to live with him forever because of literally having the balls out and we're going to see a decent battle between those two in the 250 class with deegan and deegan definitely was less aggressive this weekend because the fine and everything star yamaha and his dad i am sure the people around him was like yeah we need to cool it just a bit and gosh da, da, da. oh did you notice that there was a a brunette in the main event for the 32nd board girl uh i i thought that was ironic and funny because a blonde ended up getting hit <laughs> so there's a brunette that's for the 450 main just interesting i want to know in the comments below what you guys think if jet is toying with the field those races especially the last one it seemed incredibly obvious that he was just phoning it in to win the overall but then when you have sexton with his works suspension which is really just a conversion kit these guys have all sorts of unobtainium stuff um i've alluded to on my channel with some of my shorts seeing hey look at these tech tens these are modified tech tens they've got tech eight soles i personally love 
Tech 8 soles because they're not as plasticky as the others. You can actually hold on a little bit better. So why wouldn't the factory guys, talking out to Alpine Star guys, they say, yeah, these guys have unobtainium stuff. You know, they have special stuff, which is ironic because we have a whole production rule in the racing where supposedly these guys are taking stock bikes and barely modifying them to go racing. That's why I really think that the whole sport needs to go straight to work stuff. And, you know, yeah, it might hurt the privateer a little bit until there comes up with a privateer class which could be totally electric or whatnot but it, i think it would help everybody it would help people making new parts having more money having more sponsors having more fans because there's a thing people want to see bigger faster stronger right and back to the kenny thing uh because some of you guys aren't here and now we've got 500 people in the chat room here yeah the vertical thing sucks because guys I freaking moved. I've got like four hours of sleep. I've actually been sniffing, sniffing salts and I got no internet because the internet guy decided to take the day off. Heaven forbid you ride around in a little bit of snow. Didn't you know that this is uh, a motocross YouTube channel that doesn't really matter that much? So here, here's the new YouTube studio. Uh, there's a 77 inch OLED over there. I spent like six grand on that. You know, gotta think crypto. Unfortunately, crypto is not doing well right now. Man, just a bummer. But here, here's the other room. We got the other room. Uh, new house. Uh, this was a, a pain in the butt to try to get this guy too. Uh, it's 3,200 square feet. And yeah, uh, I wanted to have a gym in the other one. But no, just here's the new YouTube room. Really, what else do I have to say about the race? Dude, that track was much better. It was raceable. Yes, there's some one lines, but because of how many lines in the ruts, it made for some darn good racing. The Tomac situation, you make it seem as if, what's going on with this guy again? Because he's hot or cold, hot or cold. At least we have Kenny to keep us alive by this dude just keeps getting better and better with age. It's like a fine wine. Kenny is the German fine wine. Uh, yes, Bubba calls him the German chocolate, but I'm going to call him the German fine wine. Um, I will say that, guys, because I normally have a sponsorship deal here with uh, Precision Transport, those guys do help out the sport quite a bit. So I do want to say, even though that this is on a front-facing uh, land, this isn't landscape, this is portrait. I do want to say, guys, check these guys out with Precision Transport. It's 877-827-0618. One eight. They do help out a lot if you need to move. Honestly, I wanted them to help me move, but they couldn't because they couldn't do any residential stuff. But if you've got something really heavy that you need to do, they will freaking do that. Everything in my office is dying. I'm running low on freaking sleep. I know some of my quality has been changing just a lit little bit because of this darn move. It's been a massive headache with stuff. Last week, I had all my videos pre-recorded. I spent probably uh, 20 hours straight just editing and moving stuff to try to get stuff ready because I was driving the entire time. I know I've talked about most of this stuff. This week, I'm going to get those videos out with the lines and the mistakes, and we're going to keep it WFO because there's nothing else you can do. It's just freaking kick ass and keep going we got to be like kenny because somebody's got to take jet down and on that topic i believe kenny's really the only guy that has been able to pass jet just straight up kenny is more aggressive than he's ever been before you'd always see kenny hang back he would hang back he wouldn't he wouldn't push the envelope but he has been pushing the envelope. He's been pushing people. He's been getting shit done. He's been cashing checks. It's been good to see. I am even more of a Ken Roxon fan. So on that note, I'm going to leave my YouTube studio. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll go upstairs real quick and, you'll, and I'll see the, the small party that is going up here. They have no idea that they are going to go live. And maybe I should have them have some stiffing salts ready so that that could go. Maybe, I, honestly, I should probably take that down because I do have a two-year-old. And sometimes when she comes down here, I do not need her to grab that. So I'm going to take that and, oh, Jesus. <laughs> that ammonia, that ammonia sure gets you. We're ready to go. We're ready to go up. Hope you guys are enjoying the live show. This one is definitely more fun. But hey, till next time. Hey, 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 hey. I need everybody to brop. Can everybody brop? Okay. You guys got to brop. I can brop. I don't know if I can brop. It's, it's been a super cross party, so. Okay. Ready? Ready. One, two, three.
Bro! Bye! Bro!